Okay, so can you hear me? Say yeah, if you hear me, yeah? Awesome. So uh, what if I tell you that uh, this is so cool, I never did a talk in a observatorium. What if I told you that this scene right here, or this game, because I can play with it, is entirely done with view components. So this is done declaratively, and I have another example. Uh, this is the sound where it comes from. Uh, it's done by one of our core team members. He created this synth wave kind of thing. It's also done entirely with view components and compositors. So that's what my talk is about, and I'm gonna mute so you don't have the sound all the time, okay? Let's get back for my slides. Yeah, so uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm gonna present today, uh, my library is called Tress Yes, and the idea is to bring the magic of 3D to your view applications. Uh, my name is Alvaro Sabu. I'm a DevRel engineer, or well, uh, I had to update this. It's actually, I'm a developer experience engineer in the startup block. Uh, I'm from Barcelona, Spain. Uh, but originally from uh, Venezuela. I'm creating content on Alvaro Dev Labs, and also my portfolio that I never finish is uh, around there, uh, and my Twitter and social. So you're welcome to say hi anytime. So what is Tress.js? Yes? Is Tress.js yes is a view custom renderer on top of 3GS, which is the core library in JavaScript to render WebGL uh, experiences. So you can use it to build a scenes de declaratively, like you will do with the UI uh, to create different things like view components and composables. Tres is a Spanish word for uh, tree, yes, uh, and it's pronounced tres, and in reference of the library. So how do you get started with it? We have several flavors, but you can install it with your uh, uh, packet manager of choice, or you can always play with it on our Vue.js uh, playground. So you can go here and directly code, and you will see that the, uh, like the output here. Uh, I'm gonna share it later on my socials, okay? So, do, 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 do. Let's create our, our first 3D scene. So this is like the setup syntax of Vue with a script and a template. What we are going to do is we are going to import the Tress Canvas component from the core. And then we are going to add it with a prop called window size so it occupies the whole size. Is it visible? Yeah? OK. So uh, we import it, we use it in the template, and then uh, as a good practice, we can use another component on view, OK, a subcomponent called, I don't know, the experience, the scene. Just because the Tress Canvas is a context provider, so all the context about 3D is going to live inside of it. So it's going to make things easier. Okay. Then I, I'm forgetting that I have the animations. This is so super fancy now. Um, first, we need to see something, right? Something render on the scene. So we add a perspective camera with a position in the scene and a look at, which is like where it's going to point out. So you can start noticing that this is a parallel between the 3 years uh, objects and how they use as components here. Then we can uh, add some objects into our scene. So I'm going to add a box. Okay, A box is built with a tress mesh. So you can uh, do the analogy between the geometry being the HTML of the 3D object. And then the material is going to be like the CSS of the object. It's going to declare like the uh, what color it has, if it's reflective, if it's not. Okay, All that comes together in something that is called a mesh. And if we're lucky enough and we add a light to the scene, because if not, it's everything is dark, we come up with something like this. Okay, So hey, we have our first 3D render ever on the screen already with these components. So we can say, like, woohoo, clap your backs. You already did your first 3D scene ever. But can it get better than that? Of course it can. So uh, right now we are using uh, the, the plane like directly on the middle of the, the, the scene, but we can add some arguments for the constructor. So the arguments will depend on the component that you're using. In this uh, case, I'm going to modify how the box geometry looks like. So I'm adding some uh, properties to the width, the height, and 
the depth, let's say. Or I can change the rotation of the whole cube by changing their property here and using some math in order to change it. So this is how it's going to look like after we do those changes. So we increase the size of the cube, and also we rotate it a little bit. Let's make it glow, right? And this is when I have something to announce. And um, we just launched today the post-processing library for TresCS. So you remember at the beginning of the talk, I was showing you a sort of cool game with glowing lights and such. Post-processing library is meant to make it easy and focus on developer experience. So you can add it as Tracy as post-processing. And it's as easy as adding uh, for the material, you need to enable the emissive. So it's a property that allows you to say, OK, I want to have this intensity and also the color of the, uh, the glow. Okay? And then you can import something called the Bloom and Effect Composer. So the Effect Composer is going to be like the context of the effect. So you can pass several passes. And every pass is going to be a different effect. So you can you build up different post-processing effects. Why is it called post-processing? Because it's not rendering in real time. It's just taking what you render and then adding post-processing, as you will do with movies or video games. It's the same concept. So we are using the bloom effect uh, with an intensity, luminance, threshold, yada, yada, like it's really technical, but it's, it's what allows you to detect when to, to low. And voila, we have a glowing cube. Amazing. Woohoo! So uh, this is when we can start dancing and figure out, OK, we can do pretty cool stuff with uh, 3D on the web. And the cool thing is that also it's pretty performant. So um, since I have only seven minutes today, I only wanted to show you a little glimpse of what you can build with TresCS. And you can notice like the uh, small amount of code that it requires to get something working. So the next steps will be, uh, I put some QR, so I, I hope they are working. You can check the documentation. We have a lot of like nice to go, um, get my first scene running. Uh, we have a cookbook where all the community is adding recipes on, for example, how to do animations, how to load models that you don't load from video games or like free in the internet. Uh, and we have a YouTube playlist that honestly I had to create more content next year, that's my hope, uh, where we show the basics of how to get started with. Okay? Uh, it will not be a, a good talk for my side if I don't thank uh, our sponsors. So this is all the people that allows you uh, allow us to continue working and to provide to the different contributors uh, some monetary support. That's really important. We have companies as well that are supporting us uh, by sponsoring. Uh, big thanks to Stack Blitz uh, for the collaboration on the BitConf. And yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, thank you very much. I still have 30 seconds. So do you want to see another demo? Yeah? yeah? OK, let's go real quick. Uh, here and go back. Since we're in a planetarium, come on, quick. Uh, what about some galaxies? Yeah, so we can change the color here. Is it visible? Oh, uh, kind of, right? I don't see it from here. Uh, yeah, you can change the color, uh, like how many randomness it has, uh, size of it. And this is all as well done with view components. Thank you very much.